A Boeing 747 is climbing out over a suburb of Amsterdam. But just a few minutes after takeoff, the crew is in serious trouble. When suddenly at flight level 65, non-3 and 4 engines and their pylons departed the right. The plane gets closer and closer to the ground. And then it happened. How could this happen? Stay tuned. On October 4, 1992, at 1720 UTC El Al Israel Airlines Flight 1862, a Boeing 747 to 200 freighter signed off and prepares for departure from John F. Kennedy International Airport, New York, to Ben Gurion International Airport, Tel Aviv, with an intermediate stop at Shiphol Airport for a crew change and cargo handling. The aircraft involved was an almost 13 years old Boeing 747 which had been operating for ELAL Airline since March 1979. Almost from the very beginning, there had been technical issues with this type, and particularly with the engine disconnect mechanism. As the name suggests, the engine disconnect mechanism protects the wing structure and fuel tanks against the consequences of pylon overloads. It's like a failsafe analysis, and it's a completely automatic feature. The aircraft was powered by four Pratt, and Whitney JT 9D7J high bypass ratio turbofan engines, the four engines and its associated pylon attached to the wing through forward and aft and mid mount fittings, and it is a clean breakaway of the nacelle and or pylon from the wing is ensured when the shear loading of this mounting exceeds the design load conditions. I know it's incredibly technical, but it will become very important, trust me. Like I mentioned before, this partial type had a history of problems with the so-called fuse pin, a small part which include in the mount fittings. These fuse pins are responsible for disconnecting the engine from the wing in a safe way if there are a heavy load on the engine. Since 1979, there had been eight between fatal and serious accident on both B747 and 707. The eight was between either engine separation or pylon break free plus a numerous reporting from operators regarding pylon wing attachment fitting problems were received. In most cases, the reporting dealt with cracked fuse pins at different pylon wing attachment fitting locations. The problems seemed to be mainly related to engine Nong 3. After each case study, the investigation led to a fatigue or crack in the mountings. During that period, Boeing issued a number of service bulletin to carry out inspection for a specific type from fuse pins and to investigate the area in the aft and foid engine pylon on the wing-mounted engines, whether if there are cracks or corrosion. But only after a couple of months later and their service bulletin also came out with similar content, but for another type of fused pins, none of this service bulletin were time-framed. This meant that it was up to the airline to decide when they want to comply with it. After a few years, FAA issued an airworthy directive made a different version of services bulletin mandatory to announce that installation of the new style fuse pins was a terminating action for the repetitive inspection requirement. But in April 1988, Boeing received a report of a crack in a new style fuse pin. Analysis of the pin indicated that the crack initiated from corrosion pits on the inner diameter of the fuse pin. Till almost mid-1992, there was a lot going on between FAA, Boeing, and airline operators regarding the cracks and corrosion in the fuse pins. Back to Shiphol Airport by pure coincidence, an aircraft spotter took some photographs of ELAL 1862 that night when it arrived at Shiphol Airport on these photographs. It appears that engine Nong 3 has an upward tilt in relation to the other three engines. But the aircraft was signed a transit maintenance check, which include an item instructing the engineer to inspect the condition of the engine and strut, with no defects were recorded, which could have played a role in the accident. As the aircraft reached to Shiphol Airport without any issues listed in the crew report, and the flight went smoothly. At 14.45, a crew consisting of two pilot and flight engineer were scheduled to flight all the way to Ben Gurion International Airport, Tel Aviv, a typical routine five-hour route. The pilot Yitzhak Fuchs, who was a 59-year-old, he has close to 25,000 as a total time of which 9,500 hours in the mighty Boeing 747. 
He was joined by a 32-year-old first officer, Anan Ohan, who had 4,288 hours of total time, 612 hours on the Boeing 747. Additionally, a 61-year-old flight engineer, Jadalia Sofer, with 26,000 hours of total flying experience and 15,000 hours on the Boeing 747. All have passed their line and simulator checks in accordance with the approved training and qualification program. Share the cockpit with the crew and on revenue passengers setting in the jump seat, a 23-year-old woman who worked at the Israeli company El Al. She was flying to Tel Aviv to celebrate her birthday, but not only her birthday would be celebrated. In Tel Aviv, her fiancé was eagerly waiting for her, because in one week, it would be their big day. They were getting married, celebrating their love. The co-pilot was to be the pilot flying and the captain was to be the pilot not flying, once the pilots had finished their pre-flight checklist. The flight was supposed to departure at 16.30, but received an ATC slot time and rescheduled at 17.20. At 17.04, the captain requested clearance for pushback and the aircraft taxied out at 17.14. The takeoff roll on runway 01AL started 1721 with no issues. As the aircraft was passing through a 6500 feet when suddenly a loud explosive sound was heard by the crew followed by separation of engine Nong 3 and struck engine Nong 4 on its way causing the Nong 4 pylon and engine to separate from the wing. When suddenly a loss of hydraulic and electrical and pneumatic system for engine 3 and 4 due to its separation. This causing a loss of users that actually use hydraulic and electrical pneumatic system. At that point, the cabin crew thought there was an only one engine loss due to lack of the visibility for engine Nong 3, but the what actual happened is engine Nong 3 separated from the wing and hit engine Nong 4 on its way, which led to a major damage for the leading edge surface on the right wing. The captain initiated a mayday call to the ATC to declare an emergency. Then, a Merstardom ATC offered to direct the captain to the Schiphol airport. The airport was only 18 miles to the west. In mean, while the damage part in the wing affected on the aerodynamic shape for entire aircraft, which cause a high drag and less lift on the right side. The captain fight to balance the unbalanced aircraft by adding more aileron and rudder movement to left side, and he tried to minimize the aircraft weight by dumping fuel immediately. After a few moments, the Nong 3 engine fire bell sounded, and the captain report the ATC. Till the end, the crew never thought that lose engine Nong 3 and Nong 4 due to separation. Witness saw and heard one or more banging sounds with a trailing dark smoke cloud. Others saw objects fall. Other also saw fire on the right wing. As they are now trying to control the aircraft, and to make communication with ATC, the aircraft was still flying at altitude of 5,000 feet, and I just cannot imagine how the feelings would have been in the cockpit as this was happening. And to be honest, that really impressed me was these guys never stopped for a single moment, tried to controlling the aircraft, and tried to figure out how to land the aircraft safely, but unfortunately they won't. At 1728 ATC instruct the crew to turn heading 260 to Shiphall Airport Runway 06. Turn right heading 260, seeing the behind you uh, in your to the west uh, distance 18 miles. With tailwind 040 degree, 22 knots. As an experienced aviation engineer, the tailwinds are usually avoided for landings as flying into the wind is preferred. The captain analysis the problem. Not preferred tailwind. A heavily damaged right wing which affected the aircraft maneuverability, the aircraft can roll just to the right. Due to split for engine 3 and 4, the aircraft's center of the gravity had changed. The captain solves the problem by taking right turns till the end. Also he chooses runway Nong 27 to match with his right turns and for a longer runway. Straight in approach was not feasible and the crew was instructed to turn right to heading 360 and descend to 2,000 feet. Let's take a closer look at the ATC conversion. 
At 1713, a controller asked what distance they required to touchdown. Shortly thereafter, the controller asked for the number of track miles the flight crew required for an approach. The crew stated that they needed 12 miles final for landing. The call, Flaps 1, could be heard as a background conversation in the cockpit. ATC instructed LL 1862 to turn right to heading 100. During the turn, the controller asked for the status of the aircraft and was informed, Nong 3 and 4 are out and we have problems with the flaps. The aircraft maintained an airspeed of 260 knots and was in a gradual descent. LL 1862 was cleared for the approach and directed to turn right to heading 270 to intercept the final approach course. The airplane was then at an altitude of about 4,000 feet with a ground speed of approximately 260 knots and on heading 120. At 1735, the flight crew added, and we have a controlling problem approximately 25 seconds. Later, the co-pilot called. In the first part of this transmission, commands from the captain to raise all the flaps and to lower the landing gear could be heard. During the middle part of this transmission, a sound was heard, and in the final part of the transmission, another sound was audible. These sounds were later analyzed and determined to be the stick shaker and the ground proximity warning system, respectively. The pilots managed to control the damaged aircraft for over six minutes and a half, during all the way to the end as the aircraft descend more and more the speed also decreased letting the aerodynamic forces between the damaged wing and the other more and more. Unfortunately, this caused a very high sink rate, and the crew finally loses almost all ability to prevent the aircraft from rolling to the right. The airplane crashed at 1735-42 into an 11-floor apartment building in the Billmanier, a suburb of Amsterdam, approximately 13 kilometers east of Schiphol Airport. The impact was centered at the apex of two connected and angled blocks of apartments and fragments of the aircraft, and the buildings were scattered over an area approximately 400 meters wide and 600 meters long. Firefighting and rescue operations started shortly after the crash. ATC communication is devastating. The aircraft was destroyed by the impact and the resulting fire. May rape them all. After the accident, there are many scenarios such as terrorist attacks. As El Al is an Israeli airline, there were suspicions that the plane might have been the target of a terrorist attack. Additionally, there were witnesses who reported hearing an explosion or seeing something fall from the aircraft just before the crash. An extensive investigation into sabotage was conducted. It looked into the type of cargo, various security aspects, and general maintenance activities. Furthermore, the engines, pylons, and other components were visually inspected for signs of a high-energy explosion or other sabotage indicators. The result of this thorough investigation was negative, indicating no evidence of sabotage. Another possible cause of the engine failure was a bird strike. When Flight 1862 took off, there was a massive bird migration occurring in the Schiphol area. Birds were even observed at altitudes of up to 5,000 feet. To determine if a bird strike had indeed occurred, tests were conducted on engines number 3 and 4 and all components of the leading edge of the right wing. This investigation involved the use of ultraviolet light and chemical tests. The parts were examined thoroughly. And guess what? No evidence of a bird strike was found. To ensure that such an incident would never happen again, significant measures were taken to improve aviation safety. It served as a reminder of the potential consequences of minor structural weaknesses. Across the world, solutions were sought to prevent such accidents from occurring again. Firstly, stricter requirements were imposed on inspections and maintenance of aircraft, with a particular focus on metal fatigue and structural weaknesses. Aircraft were to be thoroughly inspected and maintained according to rigorous procedures established by airlines and manufacturers. Additionally, new guidelines and training programs were developed for both flight crews and air traffic controllers. Emphasis was placed on handling emergency situations, promoting effective communication, and enhancing collaboration among all involved parties. Special programs were also implemented to monitor fatigue and stress on aircraft throughout their lifespan. 
Advanced sensors and monitoring systems were utilized for this purpose. As a result, aircraft could undergo regular checks to identify signs of fatigue or weak points. This enabled the early detection and resolution of potential issues. If you found this video interesting, you'll also love the one featured here. Let us know which airplane accidents you would like to see, and be sure to subscribe because once we reach 1,000 subscribers, we will have an exciting giveaway. Click on the next video, and until next time.